All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kem. I'm your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. In today's episode, I will be proposing a hypothesis for the operation of the recently discovered potential chamber located above the Grand Gallery within the Great Pyramid. This is episode 138, The Function of the Great Pyramid Void. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, share, and stay tuned if you want to help support this channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. Check out the Land of Chem members only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. Links in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube. Let's go with Lex and G, formerly Egypt Eats, for food reviews and other international travel related content, and Egyptian Trash Cats for all you cat lovers out there. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's intro. So, without further ado, Let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder, the second 2024 Land of Chem Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour is on, and a few bookings are still available. But the deadline for reservations is coming up at the end of August, and the time to make moves on this is now. So if you are interested in coming to Egypt to see the pyramids for yourself, including special permission access to Abu Sir and a private entry into all three chambers of the Great Pyramid of Giza at night, during this epic adventure experience coming up in early winter later this year, please send me an email to contact at thelandofchem.com with the subject line, Egypt Tour 3, and I will send you the full tour itinerary and pricing details. Thank you all so much, and I will see you soon here in the land of Chem. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. Now to begin, here is an image showing the void above the Grand Gallery that was discovered by the Scan Pyramids team in 2017 using muon tomography. And although the existence of this cavity has been confirmed by multiple teams, its archaeological designation as an actual chamber that was included in the original construction design is still tentative. However, the presence of a chamber in this area of the structure would fit perfectly with my hypothesis for the function of the Great Pyramid. So today, I'm going to explain the potential function of this void as if it were an original chamber and an intentional component of the structure. So I have proposed that the Great Pyramid of Giza is a lightning-powered chemical reactor that was producing a dilute solution of sulfuric acid in a process that somewhat resembles the modern day contact process that you can see here. With the king's chamber functioning as the sulfur furnace, the antechamber as the acoustic catalyst chamber, the grand gallery as the contact process chamber or the absorption tower, and the queen's chamber as the extraction chamber. And for those of you who are new to the channel, or any OG viewers that want to review. I have a playlist entitled The Great Pyramid with 28 episodes detailing numerous aspects of the function of this structure, including episode 45, presenting the applications of sulfuric acid. Episode 82, discussing the acidic corrosion resistant calcium sulfate coating that covered the Grand Gallery and Queen's Chambers. Episode 79, introducing the role of the inverse piezoelectric effect and ultrasound. Episode 100, explaining sonochemistry and the function of the acoustic catalyst chamber. Episode 106, lightning, the power source of the Egyptian pyramids. And episode 108 and 109, featuring critical research regarding the concentration of electric fields inside of the Great Pyramid. 
as well as several Sunday site visits with exclusive content from multiple private entries into all three chambers of the structure. And most recently in episode 120, the Great Pyramid Ultrasound Catalyst. I explained how electric currents from lightning induced electric fields in the red granite antechamber, activating the inverse piezoelectric effect within the quartz to generate ultrasound that facilitated a series of sonochemical reactions within the grand gallery or contact process chamber, involving the dissolution of sulfur dioxide into water to produce an intermediary sulfurous acid, the acoustic cavitation catalyzed oxidation of sulfurous acid into sulfuric acid, and the final dissolution of sulfur trioxides into the sulfuric acid to produce a dilute solution of sulfuric acid. This complex chemical reaction sequence is extremely exothermic, generating an immense amount of heat. And the presence of a chamber located directly above the Grand Gallery would be the ideal location for a water-filled cooling element that operated as a heat exchanger to utilize and remove the heat energy from the internal reaction chamber system. So here you can see several different types of heat exchangers with the basic premise being cold water goes in one end, heat is transferred via conduction from the internal components into the water, thus removing heat from the system and hot water goes out the other end. Now, how would a system like this work to remove heat from the exothermic reaction occurring inside of the Grand Gallery. Let's say that this void is indeed a chamber that was integrated into the original functional components of the structure. And it has been conjectured that this chamber has similar dimensions and configuration to the contact process or Grand Gallery below. So, we have the heat exchanger chamber here, located above the contact process chamber. Now, within the contact process chamber, the exothermic reaction producing the dilute sulfuric acid, generating a tremendous amount of heat. So a water-filled heat exchanger located above the contact process chamber would be the ideal configuration for this type of cooling chamber that could remove heat energy from the internal reaction chamber system in two different ways. First, as steam. And we know that steam can be a very useful and powerful tool, such as steam-driven turbines that are connected to heat exchanger systems, very similar to the one I am proposing. But I find the steam removal process to be an unlikely scenario, as there is zero evidence of steam-driven components on the Giza Plateau. And you don't need steam-driven turbine systems to produce electricity when you have the ability to harness the most powerful naturally occurring electrical phenomenon on the planet, lightning. Once again, the Egyptian pyramids are not power plants. They are lightning-powered chemical reactors. And I think a simpler method would be to simply drain the hot water out of the chamber. And there is abundant evidence of a network of fluid distribution channels connecting the Great Pyramid into various other nearby components that have been presented in many recent Sunday site visits, such as the multiple channel system running below the Black Basalt Eastern Temple and the newly discovered channel connected into the mysterious component and structure on the southwest corner of the Great Pyramid, check out Sunday Site Visit 70. So the water inside of this heat exchanger chamber would be heated by the internal exothermic chemical reaction. And the heat energy efficiently removed from the system by just draining the water. And remember, 
this detail as it will be very relevant coming up soon. And here at the bottom, you can see that I have also included the removal of the dilute sulfuric acid product solution through the shaft system located below the contact process chamber that has been corroborated by many different original archeological reports. And now, since for this episode, we are in the realm of discussing hypothetical functions for potential hidden chambers within the Great Pyramid. Let's go back to episode 60, the 2022 Great Pyramid scans and evidence for hidden chambers, where I presented the results from this paper entitled, Synthetic Aperture Radar Doppler Tomography Detects Undiscovered High Resolution Internal Structures of the Great Pyramid of Giza and they confirmed my hypothesis about the existence of the reflux shaft that you can see here that connects back into the subterranean pump chamber that was utilized in the draining stage of the contact process chamber to draw air into the sulfur furnace during the initial combustion reaction. And the extraction chamber shaft system that you can see here in blue that was utilized to remove the product solution from the internal reaction chambers. Now, this team and their Doppler radar scanning also showed the void above the Grand Gallery, but they are proposing a bit different configuration with the void in this area and showing a shaft system circulating around the King's Chamber or sulfur furnace, as you can see here. And I'll show this from a few different views. Here in green is the transverse void or chamber that we've been discussing in number 19. And here in yellow is the shaft system wrapping around the sulfur furnace. And from this vantage, they are also showing these black pipe looking features that connect into this heat exchanger component. And if you haven't seen episode 60 yet, again, go watch the entire playlist on the Great Pyramid that features this episode, as I go into much greater depth explaining the paper, the scans, the diagrams, and my interpretation and opinion thereof. So now, let's apply my proposed hypothesis about the water-filled, heat exchanger cooling system to this speculative diagram presenting more potential hidden components within the Great Pyramid. Here we have the King's Chamber and the Antechamber viewed from above with the void here in green and this shaft system circulating around the sulfur furnace and catalyst chambers. And as I just mentioned, this type of heat exchanger system is utilized to remove heat from a variety of different reactor systems where water being circulated around the extremely hot internal components is converted into steam that can drive turbines and other mechanisms. And this same methodology would have been applied to the operation of the Great Pyramid to remove the heat energy not only from the initial lightning strike heating the sulfur furnace, a topic that we'll be getting to soon, but also to transfer heat away from the exothermic reaction occurring in the contact process chamber or the grand gallery. So this shaft system wrapping around the sulfur furnace and acoustic catalyst antechambers would have been filled with circulating water to remove heat energy from the reaction chamber system. But please keep in mind that all of these proposed components are completely speculative and based on the interpretation of the scans and diagrams created by the Doppler radar team as explained in episode 60, an episode which also presents my skepticism of this data extrapolation. And the void itself, located above the Grand Gallery, has not been officially confirmed as an original chamber or component of the Great Pyramid. And any functional interpretation 
is tentative pending further exploration. But as presented here today, its position within the structure would be the ideal configuration for a water-filled heat exchanger that was utilized to remove heat from the internal reaction chamber system. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 138, The Function of the Great Pyramid Boy. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and in this week's Sunday Site Visit, we continue our investigation of the chemical reactors inside the Red Pyramid of Dashur. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube, click that little notification bell, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage, check out the Land of Chem members-only channel and thelandofchem.com. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, links in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there, and let's go with Lex and G, formerly Egypt Eats. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you. Next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.